Hey everybody, this is Dean and welcome to Photo Blue. Today I thought I'd show you how to edit a raw image in NX Studio by Nikon. All right, whenever we edit an image, uh, we want to come up with a strategy of how to edit it and how to approach it. And we want to know what format and what form we have the original image in and what format or form is going to either be its final destination or the destination to the next step in our workflow. When we're looking at raw photographs, there's a lot more information in a raw uh, file format. So we want to, at minimum, look at the shadow details and the highlight details and see how we can tweak those before we take them into the next stage because we have a lot more uh, ability to adjust shadows and highlights in a raw image than we do in another image format. If we're taking this to the next step where we're just going to convert it to a JPEG and use it for our final use, uh, then we want to, of course, fine tune the shadows and the highlights. So let's start off here. The first thing we generally want to do in a photograph is uh, look at things like cropping and straightening. You want to actually straighten things first because if you have to straighten something in a photograph or it's not quite level or whatever, uh, if you straighten it first, it's going to crop some of the image to start with. So you don't want to crop and then straighten because you'll lose more of the image. So start always with straightening and correcting uh, problems, uh, maybe with lens distortion and such. So when we look at this image, you'll see it's kind of leaning in the front, but if you look at these uh, uh, pieces of wood that make up this old shed, they're straighter as it goes down. Now, the, f the first thing to kind of look at is, is this lens distortion possibly, or is it just that the shed is just um, rickety? So one thing that we want to look at before we even start editing is to go to the info and look at what lens we used. And the reason we want to do that is because if it's a wide angle lens, there's a good likelihood there's some sort of a distortion towards the edge. And so uh, if we look at this uh, lens, it's an 18 to 35 millimeter, but this is a uh, APC or an ASP-C um, camera. So there's a crop factor of 1.5. So we have to times the millimeters by that, so 18 it comes out to be a 27 millimeter in full frame, which would be a wide angle lens, but not an extreme wide angle lens. And 35 millimeters would come out to be about 52 millimeters or about standard focal length. So it says here that we were actually using the focal length of 18 uh, millimeters in this. So it is a wide angle lens to a certain extent. So if we go back here to adjustments and we look down here at lens camera and lens corrections, if we look at the lens corrections down here, it doesn't have a place to ch check off fish eye because it's not an extreme wide angle lens. So it doesn't really give us that ability down here. So there, there are some corrections on here, but there's nothing we can really check on this lens uh, in the, uh, in this function to, that will do anything to that. Uh, and the same is true in camera corrections. Uh, however, we can actually go, if we go here to where it says straighten, you'll see right below straighten's perspective control. So if we just straighten this, and uh, what we can do is we can actually just take this little slider here and s slide it around. So if we sl slid that so that it's straight over on this edge, you see that now it doesn't look right in uh, the center and towards the other end. It looks like it's leaning back right now. So it actually looked better before we made that adjustment. So if we set it back, it looks better except for right here. And one thing we could do is we could just crop this off down on, on that side. But let's see if we can do something with the uh, perspective. Here. So there's a perspective control here, and we're going to just use the slider. And if we use that slider, we 
we can get it so it's looking pretty straight on this edge right here. So we can actually use the perspective control first. Then we could actually go into the straightening control and tweak it more if we, we decided it needed more tweaking. So let's put a grid on this so we can see. So it looks pretty good down there. And it alters depending on what um, board you're looking at. But that actually looks pretty good there. So the perspective control actually took care of that problem pretty much for us. So the picture looks a little bit better with the perspective control. We really don't need to straighten it now. And uh, at this point, you would decide if you wanted to crop it more. But in this case, I'm not going to crop it in any. So now we've kind of got the photograph to the correct crop on here. Now the next thing you'd want to do is you'd want to go up and uh, usually what I do is I go to uh, where the white balance is. And that's one of the first things that I like to take a look at. Uh, if there's a great deal of um, adjustments you might need to make between the shadow in the highlight area, you may want to actually adjust those first uh, and then see how that affects the white balance before you set the white balance. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go with the white balance. Now, this gravel right here is going to be a gray color. And so if I uh, click on the gray color there, you can see it makes it a lot more blue. And uh, we can actually go in and fine tune if we want that a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. Uh, if we take this off again, you can see it's a little warm there. With it on, it's a little bit cool. Uh, I actually like the warmer for this photograph, so I'm going to just I'm going to revert this back to the original value. I'm going to I'm going to stick with this slightly warm tone. Once again, you could tweak it slightly and cool it off if you wanted to. Uh, but usually what I try to do is I try to take the white balance and find something that's a neutral color like pavement that's that's gray or something that's white and just something that's neutral and, and hit a couple of different things that are neutral in the uh, photograph to see uh, how that uh, how that works for the photograph and how you like it. Uh, you can also use a gray card, like if you could have somebody hold up a gray card or put a gray card on the stand, shoot a picture with that, and then shoot the picture without the gray card uh, if you wanted to get really precise. But usually that isn't practical or really necessary. All right, we've got the picture cropped and straight into the way we want it, and we've got the white balance adjusted on the picture the way we want it. So the next thing we may want to move to is exposure. And so uh, we can adjust the overall exposure in this photograph so we can see what it looks like if it's a little bit darker or a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. And uh, right about where the exposure is, is 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 where I like kind of the overall exposure. But like I said, you can mo use this and uh, move around the exposure to see if you, you like it a little bit lighter or darker. The other thing you can do is you can adjust the, uh, the uh, brightness of the picture, the contrast of the picture, saturation, and you can uh, adjust highlight and shadow detail. And uh, so if we go to shadow detail, we can kind of bring up this area right here using the shadow detail. Originally, it's like down here. It's a little dark there. We can bring it up by going like this. If we turn this on and off, you see it kind of brightens other areas of the picture, like up around here and such. I don't, I don't particularly want that light end up there. So let's put it back to the original value right there. We can also mess with the highlights in here. But this is the area, let's say, that I want to really kind of adjust a little bit more. And uh, I don't like the way uh, the shadow affects the rest of the picture. Uh, a lot of times the shadow um, protection or the shadow detail uh, level will help uh, darker areas, but there's nothing real, real dark in here. Uh, so one thing we can do is we can get, we can go over to 
the uh, color point control and we can actually set a color point to say here and then we can adjust uh, the brightness right there S so you can see it, it's it's affecting based on this color point it's affecting just this area over here and so that might be a better option for us. The other thing we can do is we can kind of increase the contrast there if we want. And we can increase the saturation. If we want to make it a little bit brighter. So we have a little bit more control over there uh, using the color control point. We can also uh, set another con color control point anywhere else in the photograph that we wanted to there was another area or range of colors we wanted to experiment with. So, so initially you want to go with exposure, highlight shadow details and see how well they work. But you can use a control like color control point to, to go with specific areas or specific kind of uh, colors and tones that you may want to change. In this case, I think the color control point tool will work pretty well for that. So if we could turn off this color control point right here, you can see how it darkens everything down here. Putting it back on, it's brightened stuff up up there. So those are the kind of adjustments you can make uh, within a NX Studio and how to go from kind of a more generalized things to more specific things and tweak things. And then at this point, we may bring this into another photo editor depending on what we want to do with the photograph, or we may just decide, hey, we want to JPEG uh, and we'll just export it to JPEG and that's what we're going to use. This has been Photo Blue and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like.